All right, here come the seven beauties. I don't know why I like seven. I've never counted how many beauties it actually is. So like I said, we'll count how many beauties. But here comes the first beauty. And notice how every integral starts as the geometric integral. Right? So it has, it's just a characteristic of the curve. So I want to integrate over the length of the curve the unit tangent, a vector quantity. No problem conceptually integrating vector quantities the same as scalar quantities. Just please, for the love of God, do not think of this as three numbers, as a triplet of numbers where we're doing everything component by component. As a matter of fact, integration, as you will see later, does not work component by component. No. I spent the entire first quarter trying to get you to think of vectors as geometric objects to be treated on their own terms, and that's all you can do with them, is operate on them by the parallelogram or tip-to-tail rule, multiply them by scalars. They are just that kind of object. I just wanted to say that. So what do you think this integral equals? Uh, just before I answer, so here's our curve. You know what t looks like. It looks like this. It's the unit tangent vector. When I integrate it from start to finish, from this point to this point, what do you think the answer is? Okay, the vector that points from start to finish, what do you base that on? Uh, it's actually correct because think of S as a time-like parameter, right? Then, then we just have a point moving along the curve with constant velocity, in fact, unit velocity, right? And what happens when you integrate velocity? You get the total displacement, right? Because velocity is the derivative of displacement. So when you integrate the derivative of something, you get that something, right? Yeah, so we're integrating velocity over time. So we've got to get the total displacement. So that's correct. But let's see, what, let's see how we get there by just the recipe. We have a recipe, right? I kind of claimed that it doesn't work for specific curves and specific quantities, but this is not a specific quantity, and it's not a specific curve, it's still a semi-theoretical discussion. So let's convert it according to our recipe. According to our recipe, we need to go from S1 to S2, where S1 is the value of our arc length at this point, and S2 is the value of the arc length at this point. T, refer to the arc length s, now it's a function of s, ds. And now you will recall that t is the derivative of the position vector, which is what we were just saying in words. And now I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now does the fundamental theorem of calculus apply to vector quantities? Well, you checked in your homework last quarter that every differentiation rule applies the same way. So I, it would perhaps be a good exercise, although maybe even a distraction at this point, that it also works for vector quantities as well. It does work for vector quantities. But you can check that. I'm not, I'm not pulling a fast one on you. So this is going to be R of S2. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we can do something with these integrals, right? And look, I didn't even draw R. But this is a difference, and you know we love differences more than we love sums. The beauty about the difference is that you don't have to draw the vectors themselves. You just have to know where the tips are, and then connect the tips. And the tip of this quantity is right here, and the tip of this vector is right here. And when you subtract them, you get precisely the vector that you guys thought it would be. Great. That's our first beauty, is that this integral equals this vector. I don't even need to write it this way. I think words work much better because this is an expression that says the total amount of t along the curve. Words are better. The total amount of t unit tangent along the curve is this vector connecting the starting point with the ending point. Okay, two questions that I'm going to ask you about this. One is, would this calculations still work if the curve was not smooth. For example, 
if there was a point like this, right, if this is our curve, would the answer still be this vector? Remember, or rather recall, that the fundamental theorem of calculus only works where this function is actually not much is demanded of this function except being continuous, right? But what it implies is that it's defined. And so here there is a special point where r prime of s is not defined. Because if you look on the left, it will look like this. And if you look on the right, it'll look like this. Make sense? So at this point, r of s is not defined. It's not that it's not continuous. Maybe it's just not continuous. Well, in any case, I think that actually kind of gives us the answer if you recall the precise conditions for this theorem, but who, no, nobody does. So what do you think? Would it still be this vector or would this mess it up? Yeah, just break up this whole integral into two. One from here to here, where there is absolutely no problem, right? Because along this entire interval, everything is perfectly smooth and no problem. And none of the differentiation theorems actually care what happens at the end. It's only the interior that matters. Not all, but most. And then, so the answer over here would be this. And then... There's no problem then taking the integral over this segment, and the answer would be this. And then when you combine the two, the answer will be this plus this, which is once again this. So it doesn't matter. A kink or a break or whatever you want to call it, a singular point for this integral doesn't matter. If the curve did something like this, if it gapped, that would be a problem. Okay, that was first nice question. That's a fun question. Well, let me ask you another question. Question is, special case, when the curve is closed, so it starts and ends at the same point, then what is the integral? Zero, of course, because r of s1, so if we pick an arbitrary origin, this is r of s1, and then r varies, 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 and then you're right here, and this is also r of s2. So r of s2 equals r of s1. For a closed curve, over a closed curve, the integral of the unit tangent is zero. Is it a beauty? I think it's a beauty. I don't know if it deserves its own. I'm going to call it beauty 1a. I want to get to 7. Okay, good. We're done with the unit tangent.